Filtration is the form of air purification that we're all most familiar with. You pass air through a screen or foam or mesh or fiber weave that allows the molecules in the air to pass through it, but captures larger particles in the airstream. So the limitation of any filter device is going to be the size of the particles it can effectively capture. The chart shown here is designed to give you an idea of the different ranges of particle size that filters will capture. In the pink section you'll see on the right hand side fiber particle filters and foam filters. These are your traditional grocery store type of air purification filters and they can be effective at removing particles uh, down to the 5 to 10 micron size range. At that size range, they're still going to be unable to capture most of your household dust, mold spores, bacteria, and odors. Even if you look at HEPA filtration, the best available filter device, you're still only down to 0.1 microns, meaning that much of the viruses and bacteria and dust will not be captured by a HEPA filter. So filter devices are going to be limited to capturing particulates like dust, dander, and pollen in the air. They're largely ineffective on the microbe and gas category, including bacteria, viruses, mold spores, and odors. Of course, the other drawback to filtration is that you must regularly change the filters or wash them to keep them running effectively in your system. However, any kind of air purification setup should include some sort of filter device in order to protect the equipment from the buildups of particulates over time and to physically remove those particulates from the airstream as best as is possible. To actually address the microbe and gas categories, we're going to need to look towards more advanced purification technologies that can focus on that microscopic scale. The first of these technologies we're going to examine is germicidal UV light. Niels Finsen won the 1903 Nobel Prize for demonstrating that UV light can be effective at sterilizing microbes. It does this by taking 254 nanometer wavelength light, shining it on a microbe, and disrupting the RNA or DNA, sterilizing it, eventually killing it off. To sterilize a microbe, UV light needs to achieve a different CT value for each specific microbe. The CT value is the amount of UV light energy multiplied by a time a microbe is exposed to that UV energy, giving you the CT value. This is a direct relationship, so if you double the amount of UV energy, it will take half the time to reach the CT value. If you have half the UV energy, it will take double the time to reach the CT value. UV light is a proven object-specific treatment, but does not travel distances well. All light is affected by the inverse square law. This includes traditional UV systems, the sun, fluorescent lamps, all light in general. And the inverse square law simply states, as you double the distance from a light source, any particular point will receive only a quarter of that light source's power. So if we look at our chart here, if we're able to achieve the CT value and sterilize a microbe in one second at one inch, at two inches it's going to take four seconds, at four inches it's going to take 16 seconds, and at eight inches it's going to take 64 seconds to sterilize that same microbe that was one second at one inch. Now if you're focusing on an object like an AC cooling coil, it's going to shine on it for 24 hours a day. And this extended amount of exposure times means that even with low light levels, you can sterilize microbes and prevent growth on that object. When you compare that to air moving through an HVAC system at 5 to 10 miles an hour, it's only going to be exposed to that lamp for a split second, meaning if it doesn't literally come close enough to touch it, it's going to have no long-term effect on moving, passing microbes. The picture in this slide tries to illustrate the concept. Areas receiving under the CT value for a particular microbe will experience increased growth on the object. As you can see here, as you get farther away from a UV lamp, the power is no longer sufficient to stop mold growth, even on a surface that isn't moving. When using UV light systems, it's important that you take this into account when designing the appropriate setup. This is an effective UV light installation for keeping a coil clean. UV lights are mounted on both sides of the coil. The lights are mounted very close to the surface of the coil to minimize power loss due to distance. And multiple lights are used to cover the surface area, ensuring that every area is getting as much UV light as possible. Even with an advanced UV light setup like the one shown here, you're going to be unable to achieve any kind of meaningful purification in air moving through an HVAC system. To purify moving air, we have to look towards higher end technologies. Next up, we have PCO technology or photocatalytic oxidation. 
This technology was developed in the early 90s and uses a titanium dioxide catalyst and a traditional UV light shining directed UV onto that titanium dioxide catalyst. As the titanium dioxide molecules in the catalyst absorb the UV energy, the electrons on them are energized and fly off of their outer ring into the space surrounding the catalyst. This creates an electron hole and that hole is filled by electrons from the molecules in the air oxygen, nitrogen, your basic air components. This begins a chain reaction with these components in the air recombining them into unstable arrangements. PCO devices are specifically going to generate what are called hydroxyl radicals or one oxygen and one hydrogen bonded together. Hydroxyl radicals have a very short lifespan and because they're so unstable they're able to destroy microbes or gases that come close to them. Because their lifespan is so short however they don't leave the surface of the titanium dioxide catalyst meaning that the microbe or gas must literally come into contact with the surface of the catalyst to be destroyed by these hydroxyl radicals. So the more surface area you have of titanium dioxide exposed to a UV lamp the more potential contacts you'll have with passing microbes and gases, which is why the high-end PCO devices you'll see on the marketplace are all large units designed to fit into uh, the entire duct, giving you as much surface area as possible to maximize the potential contacts with microbes and gases. This process is effective at destroying microbes and gases. However, it doesn't do anything to microbes in the conditioned space it still relies on recirculating a huge percentage of the air through the system every hour in order to have these microbes and gases come into contact with this titanium dioxide surface.